because of how unreliable my internet connection is, I need to do stuff in the game solo, it may be harder than just going with a team but running solo sometimes got its benefit, it's fun learning how to farm stuff solo, and you could potentially end up finding something very interesting in game, but anyway, we are not here to talk about the pros and cons of playing solo, and certainly this video is not about my crap internet connection. What we will be discussing here is how to get those resources you need on the Helminth system while playing solo. I know you are eager to find out how, especially how to not get stressed out on those bile resources, so, let's cut any long introduction and begin with the guide. The first thing you'll need to know is what Helminth resources should you focus on farming, honestly. I would have put up this guide earlier if only I decided to just include every method on how to farm all the Helminth resources, but it's long and inefficient in my opinion, the best way possible to not burn out yourself while farming Helminth resources solo is not to farm all the resources, but to just pick those resources that are easy to acquire with the right frames and builds, that being said, I excluded the railjack part of this farming guide since first of all, you need a good ship to farm railjack solo, and secondly, it cost about a thousand railjack resources to get a decent percentage. So for oxides, I decided to just farm both gallium and tellurium. You can get these resources on the survival mission on Ophelia Uranus. For calcs, the fastest resource I could farm solo are iradite, grokdule, hexanon, and lucent to a globe. Iradite and grokdule can be found on the plains of Eidolon and I suggest that you go farm this stuff during night time. Hexanon is pretty common in the Dark Sector survival mission in Cameria Jupiter, while Lucent Triglobe is also an easy farm on the new open world Camby and Drift. Just try to look for those vitrific outcrops or those spiky looking resource caches. In my case, I usually have good luck finding these outcrops near these areas close to Deimos Terminus. For biotics, it's all about farming open world areas. Ganglion and Pustulite are easy to find in Camby and Drift. Mitocardia spore and Gorgaricus spore are common resources in Orb Vallis, while Mprico and Nisselpod are growing in the plains of Eidolon. These are the resources that are easy to farm in this category, and I advise you to focus on these resources and don't bother farming the other ones. If you are just going to use these resources for Helminth system that is, the next batch is synthetics. For this category, the easiest are neural sensors, Orogin cell, detonite ampoule, and polymer bundle. Polymer Bundle and Detonite Ampoule are pretty common on the survival mission in Uranus called Ophelia. While you can get tons of Polymer Bundle in this mission, I advise you to not waste it on the Helminth system since it's much needed in crafting energy pizza and other stuff. The rest of the resources I suggested are enough for the Helminth system. Fine Neural Sensors. You can obtain this while farming Hexanon in Cameria Jupiter, while Orogin cells can be acquired by farming other pheromone resources for this category, it's easier if we will just focus on nanospores, neurods, and mutagen samples, these resources can easily be acquired by farming the survival node in demos called Terrorem, you can also get Orogin cells on this node by the way, although you can also farm plastids in Uranusophilia, I wouldn't suggest using this for the Helminth system as it's best used in crafting other valuable things in the game, and the last one is Bile. People may say that this is the hardest but honestly, it's very easy to farm bile resources if you just know how to. The best way to not get stressed out with bile is to focus on farming both thermal sludge and argon crystal. Thermal sludge can be commonly found in Orb Vallis, while argon crystal can be farmed easily in MOT survival in the void. Now here's the big catch. The normal star chart mission would do, but it will yield lesser resources compared to steel path hard mode mission. Also, as a solo player, I always ensure that I have a resource booster, and a resource drop chance booster every month to hasten the farming process. Mind you, I work for the platinum by selling prime parts and I always save up platinum for these boosters every month. Please don't follow what I do and just enjoy the game. Remember that I'm a content creator and I'm just sharing how I do stuff in the game as a player and a content creator at the same time. Take all my videos as guides and not as a bible that you will follow thoroughly, all I want is for you to know how to do stuff solo, and I don't intend forcing my methods into your playstyle. So anyway, Steel Path is the best when it comes to farming Helminth resources for me right now because of that 100% resource boost chance, without purchasing one in the market, you can still have higher chance of dropping these needed resources compared to having no resource boosters. In addition, a perfect companion for farming resources is the Smeter Cavat with its charm buff. One quick tip, 
If you want to somehow have better chances of proccing the rare resource boost of the charm buff, don't equip a primary or secondary weapon so that the mod would not cycle through the instant reload buff. However, you might want to equip Mitre when farming Argon Crystals in the Void. Now that you know the steps of farming these Helminth resources, let me give me recommended frames. First is Pilfering Strangle Dome Cora. This Warframe is the best farmer when it comes to those resources available in the start chart missions. The build is simply high range with the accumulating Whip Claw and Pilfering Strangle Dome Augments. For those who don't have any god roll riven on their stat sticks, I advise using the jaw sword with this build. This mod setup will provide you the maximum damage you need to kill enemies with whip claw while they are dangling in your strangled dome. And like I've said earlier, try to equip mitre with neutralizing justice augment if you are farming argon crystals in the void. For open world areas, it will be a combination of your arch wing and either Limbo or the new Warframe Xaku. Why these frames? Well, I call these frames as crate breakers. They are the best when it comes to farming resources in open areas since they can break loot boxes and it's just easy to pick them up when you have the Evacuum mod on your companion. For Xaku, it's all about max range and using their the vast untime ability to break crates and easily loot them using your companion. But if you don't have the broken frame yet, then you can always go with old reliable Limbo. Just build this frame with high range and efficiency. This way, you can use his Cataclysm to break loot boxes. If there's another mod I would highly recommend using while farming resources in open world areas, that is the Loot Detector mod. If you can, place both Loot Detector in the Aura slot, and Thief's Wit in the Exilus mod slot so you can easily locate those loot boxes while using your minimap. But squad leader, how about the sentient appetite category in the Helminth system? What does it do? This category helps the Helminth to increase its appetite for one resource that it's no longer craved. Now I have tons of shards from idle and hunting and I don't have a problem with sentient appetite, but for starters, you can just use Setter's Wisp. While you are farming resources with either Xaku or Limbo in the plains of Eidolon, you can also farm Setter's Wisp but remember, these resources only spawn in night time. They are usually found near bodies of water and you can easily locate them if you have loot radar in your mod setup. Another way is anomaly shards which I will have a separate video soon. I will give you a great way to farm this resource so you can just waste it on the Helminth system or simply use it wherever you want. So that's all about it, be sure to check back later for more Warframe guides. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future. Human error. Evolution. This is the future.